Hello guys, welcome to another train guide video type thing. Yeah, that's an intro. <laughs> uh, so a while back we looked at making some windows and doors, but I, so I thought in this video we'll look at making something that you can use them in. So we're going to make a, uh, sort of a medieval half timbered building. Quite useful for things like uh, Warhammer, Lord of the Rings, Mordheim, etc. But what I wanted to do really is make a specific style, and that's sort of this old school old hammer, I guess style. So for this I'm taking inspiration from something Games Workshop released many years ago called uh, Warhammer Townscapes. Uh, what it was, it was a collection of cardstock and you had multiple copies of the same page and instructions would tell you what bits to use and how many you'd need. So we're going to use that as a basis but then just sort of pimp it and make it out of phone call uh, and balsa wood and coffee stirrers just to really enhance the uh, the finished look. So uh, this is what we're going to aim for, we're going to aim to build. And so this is actually a house that's um, in the Warhammer Townscapes. It's one of the sort of simple ones. So we're going to look at making that. So uh, yeah, let's just crack on. So to make a uh, sort of basic sort of old hammer to old house, uh, we're going to make it our foam core. and make it our four bits of foam core to and two are the same sort of size. Um, when cutting foam core, make sure you use a uh, sharp knife and do it in multiple pulls. Otherwise, it will uh, sort of tear the foam rather than cut it. And you want a nice, smooth shape like this. The size of these, just to show you, are the uh, sort of end bits here are three inches wide. Um, it is four and a half inches tall with a pointed groove of just over an inch and a quarter I think it's like a sixteenth inch over an inch and a quarter so we need two of those um, then you need two bits that are same sort of height four and a half inches but the um, the building uh, on this side is two inches wide but because this bit's going to attach either side Of your end bits like that that's the bit that needs to be two inches wide so what you need to do is measure it so it's uh, two inches minus the width of two bits of foam so if I can do this one-handed to show you so when you put it all together if you can see that it's two inches uh, next up it's uh, before you cut out it's easier to uh, before you glue it it's easier to uh, cut out the windows and doors. Uh, now, there has been a video on making uh, doors and windows, so that's what I've got here. I've got some pre-made using that guide. I'm using this style of door. And if we look at the uh, Warhammer townscape for the building we're making, we can see this door, this side would have a uh, door here, and then it's got a door somewhere in the roof here, something like that. Uh, oh, and it's got a side bit. So what we're going to do here is put a window here, and a window here, like so. Yeah, there'll be a beam of wood there, beam of wood there, sorry, something like that. Uh, this bit here will have a uh, window. I've only got four windows, all right. Oh, an extra window, so I'm going to get rid of that one. Don't like to look at that one. Didn't make that one as well. Now, and now this roof window, uh, what I've got here is because I know it's going to have like the beams up here will be part of the window. Uh, what I have done is I haven't put the top and bottom window on, so that will go there. So what you want to do now is come in and uh, draw around your. Uh, your doors and windows uh, and then what you want to do is number them so you've just got to work out where you actually want want them make sure it's in the right place uh, this is off to the side this door this will be what we cut out and then we we'll glue it in so okay I'm just next to it got a little one a big one on the back there you don't want to push in too deeply on this because otherwise it will score it I'm going to do the same for this. If 
So I'm going to go around all the way. To put, we can probably two. Just so when you cut out, you know you're actually putting the right size in. Just because these aren't machine-made doors and windows, so they're going to be slightly different sizes and shapes mm -hmm. and things like that. So uh, yeah, that's just something to take into account. And what you may want to do is just make sure you know when he's there, it's going to be a, a nice sort of place for a window. You wouldn't want to place it up there, that'd be pointless. So get a model, it's an old elfie here. Quite fit in, sort of an old hammer style elf. And just do the same with the doors and windows. We're gonna come in. Draw around it. And just label them. Put one there. Big one there. And I'm gonna carry on doing this and I'll cut these out. Got it all cut out, but because we're going to be assembling it and painting it before we glue these in, our marks here, you're not going to be able to see. So if you can, get like a white gel pen and just on the inside, because you're not going to see the inside, just come in and put it nice and big. So here's one for the door. Just going to put it nice and big. So then when you're looking, when you've got it assembled, you can sort of see, put it here as well, that. I'll be able to come in and put number one here. I'll do the same for the windows. So the windows here, this is window one. Window two. Just so I can see, now I'm three and four here. So when it's assembled, which we're gonna get onto next, we can, uh, we'll be able to assemble it, paint it, come in last and just stick our doors in. So door one, we'll just go in like that when it's done. To glue it, what we're going to do is come down, run a uh, blob of glue down the edge, like so. Uh, and then what you want to do is make sure, I've got a trusty sort of right angle thing in a minute, and uh, I'm going to put some pins through, like so. On the top one at the bottom, and you can put them in halfway and then remove them at the end. If you know you're going to see, make sure you've got the insides, you know you're going to see the outside, but as we're cladding with this with wood, you can leave them on potentially. Although, of course, here I won't be able to because the window is going to go in. So, with these, we will be removing these afterwards, but sometimes you can get away, perhaps say here in the bottom, I can just sort of push it all the way through. And it'll just give it extra strength. So, I'll just leave that one in there. This one I'm just going to pin in until and then just leave it like so, leave it to dry and I'll remove that at the end. Next up we're going to be working on the timbering. I've already made a start here uh, on these sides but I thought I'd show you here. It's done using these which are coffee stirrers. So um, I've actually bought a whole pack of these because I make a lot of timber houses. So, but you can, I'll put a link in the description, but you can just pick up some coffee stories when you have a coffee somewhere and keep hold of them. Uh, to do this, they have a rounded end, so you just want to come in with a pair of pliers, snip it, and then you want to let, put it across here so you can get the width, and on the uh, smaller side to make it uh, flush with the, uh, width of the uh, building and on the wider sides you make the width of the timber the width of the building plus width of the two coffee stirrers either side so just coming with pencil put a mark there pair of pliers cut it off and you'd end up just gluing this in place I've got enough glue I am running out. Just glue it in. Like so. So what I do is I'm gonna do put the other bits in and uh, I'll stop here so we can show you how to do these bits. To get these uh, sort of angle beams in a similar process, you put your stick in here, go across 
top here, put a line here where it's going to be angled there, and then a line down from the apex of the roof. Give that a cut. Like so. And then this should. Is in place be roughly like you be able to come in and it should be the right angle at the top here just to come along mark at the bottom here where you need it give that a cut and then you've got your two angles once you've done one the second one's quite easy And we just glue that in place and finish off the rest of the, uh, the design. So one thing this building has is a little sort of balcony bit up here. So we're going to make this out of foam. So we're going to need to have three bits of foam. Uh, these are about it's under a quarter of an inch, and these are sort of the width of how you've done your your, um, your beams here. And one thing we will have to do is just take a little nick out of the end. Here, just so it can sit flush. Like so. And then these here can have some sort of uh, pattern cut into them if you want. Make them look a bit more wooding. Um, woody. Sorry, my brain's thinking ahead to the next stage. Uh, more like support beams or something like that just little shelving bits these will get glued on underneath like so and then we will we will be attaching this here but we need to make it look a bit more wooden so i'll come back to that in a minute this building also has a uh, lean-to a uh, wooden lean-to at the end here and so while we're waiting for the balcony to dry, we can make that now. To make it, you'll need um, three bits of foam. Uh, so first is uh, two bits that are gonna be fairly much, pretty much the same. These are five centimeters high by three centimeters wide. Then all you do is come up from the bottom of these pieces, put a little bit, three, uh, put a mark three centimeters, then come in and uh, cut that off. So. So it angles down. So I hope you can see that. Like so. And then these bits will form the side bits of the lean to. And then you'll have a bit that's uh, the same height as this. So three centimeters. It'll go either side like that. And this will glue here. But I don't want to glue it in just yet. What I want to do is glue these bits together. Um, but I won't do that yet because I want to clad it in the wood. So to do that, we're going to use balsa wood. So to clad it in, balsa, in the balsa wood, just take some balsa wood, make sure the grains go in uh, vertically, put one of your side bits in, draw around it, and then cut that out. It's going to be the same for this bit, but you're going to have to take into account that it's not only the width of the two bits of foam, but also the width of two bits of balsa wood either way. So I'm going to get these marked out and cut out. There's just some uh, extra details we've got to put in. This side here had a window in, so what I'm going to do is chop that out of the wood and have that as the window. The other side has a door, so to do that, I'm just going to it's not a very big door, it's just like a cupboard door. I'm just going to roughly put it where I want it. A small door. Uh, and I'm going to cut that out. I want it in car and hole. So, 
Um, from the hole, I want to cut out the foam underneath where the door room. be glued into the doorway here but it'll be sort of glued so it's in a bit if you can see that's so got a bit of a frame uh, I'm just gonna quickly tidy this up but before I glue that in place what I want to do is just come down and score some uh, sort of plank detailing Like all the way because you don't want to snap the wood. That's the plank detail. I'm going to glue that in place. So I'll come back when I've done that, and I'm also going to glue a little um, handle here. So here are all the bits done. Uh, I've got this bit here which is the width of the front bit and the width, total width of these bits including the balsa wood and I've just scored some planking in so all that's left to do now is to actually assemble it so I'm going to assemble it straight to the building here blob of glue here, blob of glue here so we can assemble all these bits in I want them flush with the side of the building so, I come in, blob glue here, blob glue there. That's going to sit inside. Probably be easier to do this first. Really difficult trying to build on camera. I'm just going to say that, put it out there. If you haven't to watch what you do on camera and hopefully make it look informative, but Glue that in like that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry for a bit and then I'm going to glue this onto here like so it's a general purpose that in the meantime we can clad this in uh, balsa wood in much the same way as we would do this bit all right so and this is it constructed now it's all decked porches on Balcony's on, it's all planked and everything. Just going to leave it to dry now, all the bits I've done. And next, we're going to uh, get some texturing on the uh, bit wall here and the Watland door bit at the top here. So, next up, what we want to do is get some texture on these bits. This bit's a bit more rougher than the top bit, uh, but this is like the standard creamy bit. So want just a bit of texture there. So to do this we're going to get some uh, polyfiller, ready made polyfiller, I believe Americans may call this spackle. It's just sort of a, a bit like that. A load of that down. Uh, yeah, got it on my fingers, so jump cut while I clean my fingers. Okay, next up, a bit of PVA glue. Just a Hold it together, I need a lot, and that's going to be far too thick. So, what you want to do is get some water. It's best to add a little bit at a time. And you need no paintbrush. Uh, this is one where the bristles are really warm, so I can sort of dab it on. Uh, I do, an ideal paintbrush you use is, I don't know if you've seen those kids' acrylic kits, um, they're probably ideal because you can then they cost a quid like a pound shop or something I'm just going to mix this up it may have been a bit too much water I may just uh, get rid of a bit of water I keep mixing it what we're looking for is a sort of a that's probably it's still a bit too much liquid a little more of a paste than a than a liquid I'm going to have to 
come back and add a bit of a, a bit more polyfill. I'm gonna get my fingers in there this time to get this old brush. It's best to use an old brush. On the, I'll keep mixing until it's about right. Yeah, that's looking about right. Okay, it's looking about right. So all you're going to do now is just come on. And just on here, you're just going to sort of almost paint it on. Too thick, just because of the scale. Try not to get any on the wood. And sort of go in and sort of pat it on, so it's got a bit of a pattern. And you just want to do that all over. So what I do is I'll carry on, and there we are. That's all. All done, it's gonna allow that to dry. It won't take long. I mean this is already setting already in here. So I'm gonna have to work quick. For the bottom bit, it's a bit more sort of sandy, so I'm just gonna get my modeling sand. And get a bit in, not too much. And just mix that in. This I want a bit more sandy. I want a bit more than that. I want to get you probably might want to sieve it for a better effect if you want a finer grain, but I'm just going to go in mainly because I don't have a sieve. And that should do it. And it's just repeating the same process, we're just going to paint this on. Paint this on like so, and this will just get a bit more. This will be a bit more sandy. The nice thing is, you can use it here on the edge of the uh, foam core joins to uh, mask the joins, so you won't see that. Give it a bit of a finish, like so. You can see that. So I'm going to carry on and get this all done. And there we go. It's all covered. Just going to leave this to dry before we paint it. But as you can see, you can't see any joins of the uh, foam core anymore. So it looks like a nice solid building. Leave that to dry. And this is what it looks like dry. What's left to do now is paint it all. Uh, I'm going to paint it all dark brown, but before I do that, I'm going to make this roof here, which is going to be a wood shingle roof, which will also be brown, and then we'll make the slate tile roof later. Okay, let's make the roof now. Uh, first thing is a bit of card. This is cereal box card that's the sort of same dimensions that will fit over the hole here. In my case, it's four inches wide, five and a half inches long. And you've got some strips that are going to be the same width. But they're about a centimetre, just slightly over a centimetre. And with these, I'm just marking on where I want to cut the shingles. Uh, and what you want to do is go through and have them alternating. So they, uh, so they don't line up perfectly. Uh, so I'm just doing the last one now. Uh, so I'm doing, as so I'm putting them in the order I want them. I'm just coming in with a pen. And just sort of putting some sort of pattern on and putting lots of nooks and cuts on them. Uh, and these are going to be wood shingles, these are going to be painted brown, so I'm doing this now so we can I can glue them all on. And yeah, glue them all on and paint it brown with the thing. So I'm just going to come in some scissors and just going to cut down like so, cut out all the bits just so it looks really 
I want here it's a bit rustic this lean to it's probably not up to code and you're just gonna put that I'm just gonna glue that on like that and the next one would come along once you cut it out and you glue that over the top and you put that one over the top this one over the top over the top and over the top like so so what I do is I come back when I've cut them all out and we we'll glue them on all right <coughs> to glue it on row of glue along here put the tile on and just make sure it's slightly overlapping the end bit here so the next bit of glue oh running out of glue goes at the back but also over the top of the top the row you've just made and you just put this on again so it's overlapping like so and I'm going to carry on with this and come back when we're done so here's done you can see how nice and rough stick down these are nice wooden tiles and all we're going to do now is glue it to the uh, where it's got to go on the building um, I've already got some glue in put that in like so and that's in this roof here will be made in pretty much the same way uh, but it will just be a bit of card that folds over but we get to that later on uh, the right reason I'm doing this one now is because once it's all dry totally we're going to paint the whole thing a dark brown including this roof this roof won't be it'll be gray so I don't want to do it put that in yet because that'll be a good base coat for everything we've got to paint on this building so far so I'm going to let this dry and then undercoat it in a dark brown this is it all painted brown now looks all right all we're going to do now is come in with some bone blade brown and we're going to paint the sort of Watland door bits I forget what it's actually called there must be a technical term come in and we're going to paint all these bits bone blade brown so you end up something looking like that next up you want to come in with some carrick stone uh, and just come in <coughs> so go over the top but not quite near to the edges so you're just going to give it almost a heavy dry brush I guess I'm not worried about that the edges so it looks like that so it's just ever so slightly lighter really concentrating in the middle portion of it almost a really haphazard uneven way the final stage is to get some usapi bone and just go over it almost dry brushing really not too wide back getting an even coverage concentrating down the middle like that to do the bottom bit we're going to use some um, steel legion drab and we're just going to really dry brush it on and once that's dry probably do some dry brushing here with usapi bone again this and this on stone wall effect Add a bit of a uh, detail to the tiles. I'm going to dry brush some uh, Mournfang uh, brown. And yeah, I want it, I want it coming up. So um, <laughs> just differentiate it from the wood. Yeah, something like that. Happy with that. Still where it dries, it dry lighter, but I think I'm happy with that. I 
And now just on the bottom, I want a very light dry brushing of usapi bone, just picking out those raised bits. Nothing too extreme. Don't want it to be sort of the similar colour to the top, just picking out even more raised bits. Already done that side. Yeah. Onto the final construction stage, we announced the roof. It's made in pretty much the same way as the roof we've already done. Uh, you'll need a bit that will cover this top bit. In this case, it's going to be five and a half wide by five and a half long. So in total, it's 11 centimeters. Fold it in half, and we're going to stick this here. But before we stick it here, it's probably a wise idea just to paint this black, and we'll stick that on once that's done. The tiles, same pretty much the same fashion as before, but they're going to be bigger. So these are going to be six centimeters wide to give you some overhang. And each tile is going to be two centimeters uh, tall. So it gives you a, about a half centimeter gap to glue the next one on. So they're going to be bigger, wider. And so I'll get constructing this. I'm going to paint this black and glue this on first, and then we'll cut these out and I'll glue them on on camera. All right, this bit's pretty much the same now. Uh, it's going to roll, run glue along there. This goes on. You've got some overhang, top and bottom. And then same, same as last time. Bead along the top of the tile. Bead actually on the last tile row. And then you put your next bit on. And we'll just keep going in that vein until we've got them done. There's only one last bit to do after this, and that is two little bits to do actually. That is, there'll be a ridge tile we'll put on just because to hide the bends, which you didn't have to worry about down there. We've got a chimney to do, haven't we? We've got a chimney. We need a chimney for this house. <clears throat> I've undercoated the roof in black, but now I forgot I've got to do the uh, ridge tile. So for this you need a bit card, same width as the roof, and it's sort of a, just under three centimetres wide, it's two and a half, between two and a half and three, depends on how your tiles are going. Fold it in half, put it in place, and then just carry in and mark where your ridge is going to go when it's in place, so you can see they're staggered. And then just cut these out like you did have done before and glue it in and then paint this in black as well so whilst we're waiting for this to dry and we can paint it black we can make the chimney this is just made from a 10 by 10 uh, rectangle of foam and it's 32 centimeters long now mark a little mark 22 centimeters here and draw a line and then you're just going to cut this bit out here so Come along. So cut that bit out there, and this will be your chimney. For a bit of extra level of detail, you can put um, a chimney pot on, which is this. These are this is wood actually, so you can probably get them in plastic. But these are drawing pins uh, that you kind of push into. I don't know a drawing board to hold things up, but they look like this. Uh, you can buy them from any stationery shop, and these would just push into the middle. You can glue it in as well. Just a so it then has a chimney pot, and this would I'm gonna put this here, like so. So it'd end up looking something like that. Uh, it might be a bit too high, but <coughs> that's it. And we're just gonna paint this the same way as we've painted the white on the building. Going to paint the roof now. Uh, we're going to paint it using this Mechanicus Standard Grey. Uh, a tip for painting tiled roofs, I if I covered this last time, is to just go one direction, really going down. Just want to paint going down, just so it leaves the top bits uh, not as covered, shall we say, where the tiles join. So. So rather than going up and down, you just want to go do keep on doing down strokes and keep doing that for multiple passes. 
It's better to do it slower rather than one go, just so the tiles sort of stand out. So I'll go to each individual row to get in there, but we don't want to go too heavy because you want to leave. So we go, got some Dawnstone. Uh, just want to go down lightly with it. So for the final painting of the um, tiles is Administratium Grey. It's a, sort of a dry brush amount. I'll put some on and then just come in and do the, the opposite. So you're painting just the ends. So yeah, and what this do is just make it pop a little bit. Hopefully it's coming out on camera. Probably when you're doing sort of subtle paintwork. Sometimes on camera it doesn't always come out as much as you like, so I might go a bit over the top for, for the purpose of the camera. But you see that just so it's just on the ends here. What I'm trying to do is get get a sort of a weather worn look on the tiles. But nothing too we don't want it to be administratium grey, whatever it's called, but just the ends. Just like that. And that is the roof done. Just gotta paint and put the chimney on. This bit of the main construction really is the chimney, which is now all painted, painted the same as the walls here. The pot itself is just painted uh, doom ball brown, and I'll just put a little black dot on the end of where the smoke will come out. And it's going to go here, uh, and I'm just going to use super glue just for quickness. Really? Uh, and put it here, make sure it's all lined up like so. Okay, that's pretty much it done then. All you've got to do now is uh, add in your doors. So where you've got your, your numbers, bring back your doors and windows that we made, and we're just gonna glue those in place. I'm gonna use uh, wood glue for that. So it's gonna come in, find all my doors. There we go, door one. That's going to get glued in there with wood glue. Door two is going to be put here. So anyway, like that. So what I'm going to do is glue these in and show you when it's done. And this is it complete. So we have a nice good look at it now. Uh, and it looks pretty, pretty cool really. I'm really impressed with that. It's got that nice sort of uh, old hammer type feel. So sort of that mid 90s late 80s, mid 90s, Warhammer Games Workshop film. Yeah, that's it. So, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, until the next terrain video, uh, take care. Uh, peace out.